Okay. If you guys can click saying it's okay. Yeah. Prisha, okay. thank you for being here. Take it away. All right. Well, again, thank you for the opportunity. I know this is a very busy, you know, uh, weekend. So I was, that's why I sent that email, just checking to make sure you were going to be having the meeting. But since it's recorded, people will be able to see it, you know, as, as uh, time permits. What I'd like to do is um, share my screen. I think, mm -hmm. Scott, you might have to allow me to do Oh, yeah. That. Let me, let me I got push a couple of buttons. Uh, I think the easiest thing is making you a co-host. Mm -hmm. And then you can share. Okay, let's give it a try. Oops, it looks like it's gonna work. Okay, great. Well, um, I always appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. I know you have a lot of things happening, so it's hard to, you know, fit me in and sometimes my schedule is, is not, um, doesn't always work out, but I think the last time we went, met was May of 2023. And I did at that point have a time to meet Pastor Rob. That was, I think that was in person if I remember correctly. Um, but I'm pleased to be able to share some really good news as far as the portfolio and what's been happening with it uh, since that time. And also since Mission Wealth has really been overseeing it. So what I have for today, and of course, I'm happy to answer additional questions, but is just review the, the accounts that are under uh, First United Methodist Church, um, what happened as far as distributions in 2023, so far this year, uh, the performance, a reminder of how we do that social, the social responsibility um, screens. So now that includes um, governance, um, social issues and uh, environmental issues. And then a little bit about our perspective as far as going, you know, into the future. Obviously, we don't have a crystal ball, but we look at what the, the items that we do know and make educated decisions as far as how we adjust portfolios in that regard. Anything before I start going through the different accounts? Oh. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So in um, round numbers, the what we call the main endowment account uh, is a little bit over 6.1 million. And this one did not have a lot taken out in 2023, about 40,000. In 2024, so far, 24,000. And this one does have a monthly distribution of uh, 8,000 coming out. So it sounded like before we started the recording that that might need to be adjusted whether today or, you know, mm -hmm. follow up with that information. Right. Um, one of the things that we added here because Scott had sent it to me was, was there any sort of distribution rate, you know, noted in any of the documentation that we had? And we don't have a policy or anything that was written, but in July, I wrote down here, July of 2017 is when um, we were told that sort of the maximum distribution that was expected from that account was 4.5%. And at least with my experience on, you know, finance committees, that's typically, you know, the finance and facilities committee um, decision. So it's not set in stone. Obviously, any portion of that account is that's truly endowed, obviously that, you know, cannot be touched. Um, but I don't know that I have that number myself as far as the actual endowed component of that account. The um, the second account is a little bit over 1.9 million. Again, sort of coded as the winner Smith. That one had 100,000 go out in 2023 and nothing so far this year. And uh, as far as, again, our notes, um, it said that this one could be used more aggressively than the main endowment, but that we didn't really have a lot of additional information there. And then finally, obviously, the unrestricted, uh, the 844000 and this is the one you've been uh, tapping into the most for, you know, the extensive construction. So 2023, 600000 went out, and then so far this year, about 150000 
And then finally, there is that associated account. Sorry, the, my bar of it that uh, is still under the church is the United Methodist Women. They have an account about twenty one thousand that we um, when Rem Lon was on the on the committee, he asked us if we'd help out with that account. So we have been doing that. And yeah. then I think a year ago, the Boy Scout count was still on there, but now that has been completely removed, as you know, because you had to sign a lot of stuff, probably. Yeah, yeah they they are still using you. It's the one I, I'm on the Boy Scout committee. They're still yeah. using okay. Yes, but as far as, as as it relates to the to the church, yeah. exactly. Yeah. The and what I'm planning to bring up with by Ju June is the money that we took out of the un unrestricted, the amount that we can say really went to Willow Glen because the winter Smith was supposed to be for a parsonage. So we'll figure out that number. And and I guess, Tricia, is, there, is it that complex for us to move it from one account to the other? Not at all. No. So it's basically but, just a reimbursement? Yeah, take it from one and just switch them from one to the other. Yes. Okay. We just have to, we'll figure out what the number that is and make that happen. Yes. Are the first three accounts all unrestricted? Um, well, the uh, the endowment, if it has a component that's actually endowed, which I'm sure it has, some, there's some amount that that actually is, you can take all the income from it, but you can't touch the principal. Okay. It would be on your uh, form 990, would show exactly how much is endowed. They um, don't have a 990 because it's a it's a church. Um, <laughs> they don't have any kind of tax filing. But, no, but we are. Well, we, we've got a uh, someone who's doing our uh, audit. Yes. And the last time we did an audit, we had somebody say, "In your account, we have somebody that said I want this much money to go to a particular cause." I can take a look at the last audit report that you that we have. Yeah. See what that says. Yeah. But we've never put a lot of effort into because we don't usually take much money out of any of right. the accounts. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So well, there could be there's there's different types of endowed. There's endowed for purpose, which means that it can be spent. Um, it just has to go for that specific purpose. Right. And then there are also, but there also can be an endowment that is in perpetuity. I'm just going to give an example. Let's say someone gave a hundred thousand and they said, I want this to be an endowment for, you know, it can be any income can be unrestricted as far as what it's used for, but the corpus has to remain an investment of the, of the church. Right. Okay. Um, if you have, if you have any, if you want to send me the audit to look over and see if yeah, I yeah, can... you know, and I'm just, I just pulled it up, and they only have um, temporary, temporarily restricted. They don't have permanent, um, and it's only three hundred fifty-seven thousand dollars, so um, which is not very much. Let me go down to the footnotes and see what I can find. So if that's really the case, that means, uh, unless it's purpose, you know, again, purpose restricted, um, mm -hmm. it looks like there's probably a significant amount that at this point, and because you've, I mean, we'll look at it, they've had so much growth that you didn't yes. take over the years um, that might be now unrestricted. Right. No, I, and I, I do know the United Methodist Women, they have like 12 items that they can use for what they, when they, when they take money out, it has to be for one of these 10 or 12 items. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, so what, what, okay, let's keep going. Yeah. Uh, so let's take a look at the performance and um, the, uh, because Again, I mean, there's been more recent, you know, significant distributions, but prior to that time, it was a uh, very minimal distribution requests um, and then actually additions to the accounts. So we have invested it really for growth um, and, and income, but the primary focus is on growth. 
So it has a 70% focus on growth, the growth component of the portfolio, if you look here, and then 30% on income producing. Um, and we feel like, you know, unless you direct me otherwise, the um, this is a really good spot for most, you know, nonprofit organizations at this point in time because of our expectations of what might be available going forward from from uh, the you know kind of stock market. So one question that I had, and you can you can bring it up now or the, later. We've got a, a the percentage of U.S. stock versus international stock. Mm -hmm. uh, is that the norm for what's going on, or it, it seems U.S. stocks are doing better than international stocks currently? But I I'm, I'm not a financial planner. Mm -hmm. So we definitely have the international and emerging markets in there for uh, a couple of different reasons. One is just diversification. So markets sometimes move in tandem, but but many times they do not. So we're looking for correlation. And uh, like when we're doing monthly distributions, something might be we want to sell high, you know, yeah, and buy low. So something might have been doing well as we're doing those distributions that we would shave off some of those earnings and use that uh, if we don't have enough income. The um, overall allocation uh, is as far as how much, you know, you do see a tilt definitely toward the large as, uh, U.S. as compared to the international. Um, and you're right, U.S. has been on a tear uh, in comparison for the last, now it seems like almost 20 years. But if you go back to, you know, kind of the early 90s and then the decade before that, international was uh, outperformed U.S. substantially. So we're just careful on what we purchase within there. Again, mainly for the diversification components. Uh, there are elements too, if you look at the valuation. So valuations of U.S. companies in comparison to international companies. The um, valuations are very kind of what we, we'd say frothy or very high on U.S. stocks, where on international, they're actually much below their average. So from a um, sort of, you know, it's kind of like if you walked into the grocery store and you really loved whatever Cheerios and it was on sale, you might buy extra. So we're, we're careful on how much we actually put in there, but we still feel that there's, you know, there's, there's some really good international companies out there to, to, um, have exposure to. And then the emerging markets are really the only area to get ex to get uh, exposure to like China or India or some of those, you know, um, very, very high growth uh, markets. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, if we look uh, at 2023, the portfolio was up um, net of all fees, a little bit over 14.5%. So um, a, a good year, even though you had to take, you know, a, quite a bit of money out, uh, the 757000 it did grow by the $1.18 million. So uh, again, we always want to, you know, ideally we want to sell when we're high. So fortunately, those two uh, came together last year when those distributions were, were um, high. When we look since inception, so basically uh, it's been... Um, Ten, you know, 10 years, a little over 10 years. The portfolio has averaged a little over 8.3% uh, net of all fees, which we feel really happy about over a 10 year period. That's good. Thank you. <laughs> that has. Especially 2022. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, uh, so that has resulted in over 5.5 million of the portfolio working for you, which is exactly what you what you want and gives you the flexibility and the the choices where you know where the church is now where you need some repair, you know, some significant repairs that need done and um, you know, maybe some additional support from a, a revenue standpoint uh, for just normal operations. If I go to the next page, um Steve, I think you sort of mentioned this one a little bit. 
<laughs> uh, I find that this net contribution is the most helpful in illustrating as far as what happened each calendar year with the with the account uh, right. in, in net. So early on, obviously, it was kind of con some consolidation, a little bit of distribution, a little bit more consolidation, um, a few um, larger years here, primarily 2017, uh, some consolidation 2019. And then we were doing similar to what we're doing now. We had a little bit going out each month um, and uh, a large deposit in 2022. And then, um, and then the and then the distributions for these last couple of years, or this year, or last year, and the beginning of this year. But um, the but so I think it's helpful to kind of just take a look at what's happened over the time frame. But your portfolio, this is a graphical representation. The yellow is the capital contributions or distributions when you see the little nicks down. Uh, and then the blue is the actual account value. So the good news is, is we went the blue, you know, that growth of 5.5 .5 million above what's actually been contributed. Uh, on the next page here, breaks out what's happening with the different asset classes. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the bold is what your portfolio has actually done. The gray is an, a, a benchmark for that component of the market. And um, you'll see if you look sort of return to date, uh, we're slightly underperforming. Well, not slightly. We're underperforming in the U.S. large. I'm going to talk about this a little bit later in a couple of slides. And this is primarily because um, the, the, the component of U.S. growth is really... Um, uh, consolidated into the tech, those tech companies, which you guys have some, you just don't have as much as what a, a typical S&P 500 would have. If we look since inception, you know, um, we, we just want to be really careful. We don't want, we don't want to over allocate there and have some situation like, you know, the dot-com bubble. Right. We don't want to have you have exposure by having too much in those areas. But if we look since inception, it's, our goal is to outperform the index. So we're, you see that in the US large, uh, even in the international, on the emerging markets, uh, fixed income. The good thing is, is we're finally seeing some return on fixed income since the financial crisis of 08. Uh, and then the direct credit, which we added about two years ago. And that direct credit is uh, their private loans to um, U.S. businesses, mid-sized businesses, but they are floating rate, which is why they're performing so well at this point in time. And then just a little bit of cash, you know, for for rebalancing purposes and uh, management fee and stuff like that. So again, we're really pleased with our overall result of of um, you know close to nine percent uh, as compared to the benchmark over that time frame. Great. So You're the so this is the specific part to your your portfolio. The the rest of the slides are talking more about um, sort of our thoughts going forward. Sort of you know what's happening in the marketplace. Uh, what does that mean as far as what we're doing with the portfolio? Yeah. Do you have any questions on this part before I keep going? No. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, I, for, I forgot. And then. Um, we do we update this quarterly as far as the the um to make sure that you you have that that screening on the companies that are within the portfolio for the church and as a reminder so es so what used to be socially responsible investing is now has shifted to what's called esg meaning environmental social governance and our goal uh, at the bottom of the page, it, it talks about it a little bit, but basically the rankings, um, we use a, a company, MSCI, who does the undercover rankings of each and every individual stock, but they rank, uh, we always wanna have an A or higher. And then this is sort of just the controversy. You'll see in some areas, uh, you know, you just can't get a 10. 
Uh, a good example is kind of like in the energy section, but those are uh, controversies that might be going on now. It could be labor related, it could be environmental related, uh, but but these are kind of the best of the group that that we have um, in there as far as for the U.S. shows the different sectors. Uh, I'm not going to go into each individual one or anything, but you can look at them later and let me know if you have any questions about any of them. Just a quick question, because I, I think maybe six months ago I read that there was a lot of controversy controversy as on the ESG ratings and how how much of it was smoke and mirrors. And maybe it's not because I'm not in, involved in it, but it seems that we want to keep that. I do think, I mean, it's pretty common for, um, you know, for, for religious institutions. And I mean, even, you know, I, I work with some schools that they do, I mean, in other nonprofit organizations and, and individuals, I'm not saying it's not individuals as well. Um, they're pretty accurate as far as what they can uncover that's going on, you know, from a, from a legal standpoint, from a um, regulatory standpoint with any of these companies. And there ha historically, there had been some discussion that by doing this type of screening, you may um, uh, impact the returns. And you will impact the returns in that they're not going to perform exactly in line with a benchmark. But if you look, you know, from inception with uh, Mission Wealth and uh, and the church, I feel like we've done a good job of outperforming, you know, the benchmark. And you haven't, you know, it's it's actually performed better. Good, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me go ahead a few pages uh, to talk a little bit about. Uh, I'm not going to because I'm going to talk about all these things on the next few pages. So I'm going to skip forward here. But as you've, you know, you've seen and heard in the news, um, stocks have been performing really well, especially in the U.S., but honestly, internationally as, as well. Um, we had volatility around the banking crisis. I know that was early last year now, but it was a big deal when it was happening and obviously impacted some, some banks, uh, even here in, in town. Um, but there has been positive, a lot of positive news with inflation coming down. It's not where the Fed wants it to be, but it has uh, come down significantly from, from its peaks. The labor market is still strong. And, um, and the Fed has indicated that they're going to start reducing rates a little bit, which, which the market likes all of those components. So we are, Mission Wealth is sort of in that camp of this sort of a soft or uh, no, you know, no recession uh, or extremely mild recession if we had something. That's not what, you know, is being projected at this point from the Fed. But um, that, you know, that if you, again, if you went back a year, there were a lot of people who thought that the U.S. was going to head into a recession and that has not happened. So why hasn't that uh, oh, so this is the other component I was just going to mention was that um, those top 10 companies within the U.S. have really been the largest factor in the high returns within the within the U.S. And again, we just don't want to get over kind of over our skis and put you at risk by by loading up too much in those areas. You do have a lot of Microsoft already. Uh, you don't have all, you know, um, and, but but we feel like the diversification within the U.S. on the other components is is important. Uh, the other areas, <clears throat> there's a lot. There can be a lot of controversy around those some of those technology. So not all of them make it in. I think Nvidia and uh, Microsoft are in there, but like Apple's not in there as far as the the ESG screening. I go to the next page here. Um, like I said, we're finally starting to see some returns from bonds. <laughs> it was really brutal since 2008. We needed it as bonds as a diversification. It definitely still made sense, but it was hard when, you know, you were still getting like 1% from a bond. But last year it was about 5.5. And at least with what the Fed's talking about now, we expect, you know, that we'll still see some good returns, uh, solid returns uh, with those more conservative investments. And 
um, like I said, sort of looking at that economy, the the Fed has it, it, it's an interesting balance where you know the Fed is responsible for maintaining that uh, inflation, but also employment. But by by trying to limit by trying to bring inflation down, they're basically slowing the economy, which is going to have people potentially people lose jobs. Um, so it's a it's a very tricky balance that they're they're working on. Uh, but they do, and it's and it has happened. Um, I think it probably the economy heated up a little bit more than they anticipated in the uh, third and fourth quarter of 2023. Uh, but they are seeing it start to slow slow down. Um, what we haven't seen slow down, if we if I go to the next page, is uh, the consumer. So 70% of the US GDP is consumer driven. And, um, and you're starting to hear more about, you know, credit card amount or um, credit cards being run up a little bit more. But we still have a sort of a, a, a lag over of how much money went into the economy and into people's savings accounts during COVID and all of the checks that were being distributed. So people are starting to spend that excess that had built up, but they were able to fix a lot of that debt. So even though the Fed increased rates substantially uh, over la you know, last year, um, oh, almost 90% of, of US consumer debt is fixed. And you see that here, whether it's through the mortgage, um, student loans, auto loans. So that's really has not hit the consumer as much and, and uh, more the um, businesses. And so we're seeing some slowing as far as what businesses are doing, which again is, is you know, it's a good and bad thing. The Fed actually needs to see that to help get bring inflation down. Uh, this is just a, a, a graph that illustrates that 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 um, unemployment rate has remained very very low for a long period of time, and uh, other than the, that little peak you see there because of um, of COVID, but um, it, it's when the economy you know the economy is still strong. There's still a lot of people looking for or a lot of companies looking for jobs, and that is helping the economy stay stay strong versus dipping into a recession. They are seeing some moderation on the wage growth as well. I think the the Fed is trying to be, I know this word is used a lot, very transparent, but they're trying to not surprise people with what's happening with interest rates. And um, I think they changed like three words on their statement this last time it came out. <laughs> But the the intention of our assumption, you know, what they've been saying, and you know, we're kind of in a. It seems like it makes sense that they're looking at having three more rate three rate cuts this year, at a quarter each time, because they don't want to get if they keep it too tight for too long, then they can push the economy into a recession, and then you know have to drastically reduce rates, which is not what they they don't want to end up where we landed before with this. Um, very, very long, basically zero interest rate environment. Uh, and then finally, I just wanted to put this in here um, because I, we're obviously starting to get more and more questions as far as, you know, this is a, obviously there's uh, elections going around that are going on around the world and have been going on around the world, but we have the one here um, coming up. And we want to make sure that people don't make investment decisions based on who is in office. If you look here, it shows that um, the reality is, is the economy continues to grow under, you know, with whoever's uh, in the White House. And even when you start looking at, you know, is do they have the, the White House and, you know, um, both parts of Congress, it in any of the different components, obviously it changes what gets passed, but it actually doesn't, uh, it's not like if one situation occurs that that means, oh, we're we're all doomed from a stock market standpoint. The stock market, it, you know, remains volatile, but over time continues to, to uh, grow. 
So my final slide here just talks about, I mean, we still, our, our goal is to manage the risk of the portfolio, uh, provide more consistency in returns. That helps obviously from a distribution standpoint, but also from a compounding growth standpoint of the portfolio. Uh, we do take advantage of rebalancing opportunities when we do start, when we do see more volatility. Uh, as far as from Mission Wealth's perspective, we still remain positive both for stocks and bonds. And then um, uh, using what, what's referred to as alternatives because they've changed dramatically from, from what they once were, where they used to be very, very illiquid. And um, that's what we're using in that direct credit space. So, so what, 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 do you, what, like, what is an alternative strategy or give, give, give me one or two examples? So the only part for your portfolio is in the direct credit, that floating rate uh, loans to businesses. Um, so that is the area where it has, rather than having daily liquidity, it has quarterly liquidity. Um, and those loans, so what's different about those loans is when you have a, let's say FedEx, it issues a loan or issues a bond. Let's they, they might they might issue a five percent bond. It goes through the whole investment banking process. It goes out, literally sell millions of dollars worth. But as soon as you own that bond, there's no ongoing. I mean, FedEx needs to make their payments. So it's either they make their payment and you get your interest, or they don't make their payment and they default. In the private bond market. There's a continual interaction between the lender, the business, and the um, basically the investment the investment uh, company, the pool of money, and the advisor on that who is managing the, the the loan, and they have a little bit more flexibility and also a, ability to help the company if they if they get concerned that they might have you know, cash flow problems in the future. So it's a more in, uh, interactive relationship versus just a standard public bond. Okay, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. So that's really uh, all the materials that I had here. Is there anything else um, that I can answer today? Well, Kevin, we at least want you to say hello. <laughs> hello. Sorry, I was a little uh, had a meeting that spilled over past working hours. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> no, I, I think you gave a very good presentation. And I, I, as I told others, I'll record it and send it to, to the others. Uh, one question that I, I, I noticed and I forgot to ask. We seem to do about a 30% bond, 70% stock. Is that traditionally where we've always been doing that? I, I don't really know. You've been very close to that um, pretty much since you started. And a lot of times the, I would say what we typically see is somewhere between a 60% stock to a 70% stock portfolio. Because again, until recently, you really had a very minuscule draw from the portfolio, if any, that it made sense to be a little bit more aggressive on the on the overall allocation, and it fortunately has paid off. Um, we are, we are seeing that a lot of nonprofit, you know, foundation endowment accounts are actually leaning toward that seventy percent stock because they're because uh, stocks have done so well over the last ten and twenty years. The expectation is that potentially going forward, we may, we may not see returns as high. Doesn't mean we won't see positive returns, but you know it's been averaging closer to like 11, 12% on average versus like if we looked at yours, I think it was up at 13, the US, the US stocks. Um, the expectation is maybe it'll be like eight or nine. So to get enough growth to support people's or you know, organizations distribution goals, they're taking a little bit more risk if if they can with their portfolio. And again, fortunately, 
uh, when you have a portfolio the size that you do as an organization, you can take that, you could take a little bit more risk because we have those other components we can access if we need to for cash, you know, for the cash flow needs. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from anyone? I went ahead and sent the art the audit to you, Scott and Tricia. Um, it turns out that we've got um, council designated funds, which are not in the restricted classification, but they're designated and that was about a million. And then the, res the temporary restricted funds also. So, and they're footnoted, so you can read all about those. So it seems like, you know, we probably have about, you know, 1.5 that may not be touched for everything. Okay. But that still leaves quite a bit that is unrestricted. Yes. Sounds good. Thank you. I'm gonna I'm gonna begin waving and hit a hit, hit an end button unless anyone else wants to say anything. All right. Well, thank you again for the opportunity to be here and um happy Easter. Happy <laughs> Thanks, Easter. Trisha. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Appreciate Appreciate it. It. Bye. Bye-bye. Yep. And uh, is anyone going to Monday Thursday but me? Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going. <laughs> I'm going to see Candy and Target. <laughs> and so I will go to the entire group and set up when we're going to have our, our next regular meeting once I get this set out to everybody. All right. Okay. That was Great. a good report. I do what I can. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, right. Trish is great. Thank you. It's out of trouble. I will. I'm going to hit the end button. Okay. Bye bye now. All right. Bye. Bye. bye.